Uh, the next presenter is Do uh, Dr. Motomu Kanai. Uh, the title of his talk is Artificial Epigenetics for Catalysis Medicine. Please. Thank you for your kind introduction. And I'll follow the uh, previous speakers uh, for thanking Banyu Foundation and the organizing committee to uh, giving me uh, this uh, very important uh, award 10 years ago and, or nine, nine, 10 years ago and giving me a chance to present our recent result in this uh, symposium. My title is here. And this first slide summarizes the, uh, our research direction. I grew up in a catalysis field, and we believe that catalysis can be a, a very general uh, conceptual uh, foundation to tackle uh, big problems ranging from molecular science to life science. Catalysis is uh, primarily a molecular technology to synthesize molecules. Therefore, oh, this stream is quite obvious. We believe that we can expand the catalysis to more actively and directly contribute to life science through synthesizing artificial chemical order in cells by artificial catalysis in cells. We made a new terminology, catalysis medicine, to describe this stream and this is the main topic of my today's talk. And the reactions developed in this direction should be transferred back to uh, more efficient uh, methodology to synthesize actual molecules. So this slide uh, gives you more or detailed idea about catalysis medicine. Cells or Lives are fields of catalysis mediated by enzymes. And molecules are important, as important as uh, chemical reactions in cells. As the uh, artificial catalyst becomes more powerful, clean, uh, robust, and selective, we should be able to substitute enzyme by artificial catalysis in cells. And this may be a, a, a new paradigm uh, to tackle uh, diseases. In other words, drugs are primarily molecules, conventional drugs are molecules, but we want to utilize chemical reactions as drugs. As is always the case in the, uh, any scientific field, uh, there are uh, many pioneering works. And I summarized uh, groundbreaking works in this field, in this slide, and the uh, next slide. Bertozzi is a, a really a pioneering person in this field, uh, proposing bioorthogonal reactions. Her group introduced bioorthogonal functional group, in this case, a keto group, on the cell surface by using the biosynthetic pathway uh, and modifying the uh, cell surface uh, sugars. And then by using this uh, non-native uh, functional groups, uh, they introduced uh, biotin uh, through bioorthogonal reactions. In this initial example, oh, they used uh, hydrazone, acyl hydrazone formation. Through the selective biotin streptavidin interactions, uh, they can do many artificial uh, biological outcomes uh, by using bioorthogonal reactions. Targeting native proteins, Hamachi Sensei at in Kyoto University is a very original person. And they uh, basically use ligand di directed uh, reactions. For example, oh, they introduced tri-DMAP acylation catalyst to the specific protein by using uh, ligand protein interaction. And this uh, allows for the uh, selective uh, target protein labeling 
uh, by using uh, fluorescent acylation uh, with the uh, fluorescence molecules. Trauner and Kramer uh, may step, uh, may went further, but they used uh, isolated potassium channel and introduced artificial photo switch to this uh, potassium channel. And by this artificial modification, uh, they did uh, uh, photo switching uh, uh, of the uh, function of potassium channels. With these pioneering works, uh, still the field is infancy, and there are many challenges in the, in the field. And I summarized the uh, challenges in catalysis medicine uh, by dividing uh, chemistry side as well as biology side. In the chemistry side, selectivity, target selectivity is quite a, a, a difficult problem because our body contains numerous uh, biomolecules. We need uh, one specific target and also or one specific residues, amino acid residues or uh, nucleic acid residues. So position selectivity is quite a difficult problem. We also cannot heat the reaction we should keep the reaction uh, temperature at 37 degree, and uh, water is not a very friendly uh, solvent for organic chemistry, but we must use uh, water. And also toxicity is a, a major concern, toxicity of the catalyst, I mean, or reagent. And in the biology side, uh, there still uh, remains room to modulate biological function in vivo system, in cells or in our body. And also we want to go a step further and eventually we want to cure disease. And this is uh, next generation uh, chemical biology, I believe. Uh, with these challenges, uh, I was supposed to talk about histone acetylation and epigenetics is a, a very, very exciting concept, even for chemists, because chemistry intervenes between genetic code and phenotype of the cells. And uh, in cell acetylation, uh, catalyst is uh, histone acetyltransferase and the reagent is acetyl-CoA. And we are planning to substitute uh, this chemistry by using a artificial catalysis uh, in cells to make the synthetically modified uh, histones. After su submitting my uh, lecture title, I got an email from Banyu Foundation uh, telling that uh, we should present only the published result. That, that made me uh, 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 impossible to talk about this uh, topic, <laughs> so sorry about that. But uh, uh, in the same concept, uh, we are tackling to another very uh, uh, serious disease, Alzheimer's disease. So my title should change to uh, Catalysis Medicine for Tackling Alzheimer's Disease. And also the uh, uh, origin of Alzheimer's disease or etiology of Alzheimer's disease is not well uh, determined but uh, uh, amyloid, sorry, What's that? amyloid beta protein uh, is intimately related to the etiology of Alzheimer's disease. Therefore, uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, tackle uh, the uh, A beta uh, accumulation uh, by uh, inventing the uh, protease inhibitors to prevent the uh, generation of A beta or immunotherapy to di uh, accelerate the degradation of A-beta or aggregation inhibitor. A-beta itself is not toxic. However, in a long period, like 50, 60, 70 years, uh, monomer aggregates to oligomers and fibrils, and these molecules are neurotoxic. And there is no specific function of A-beta Therefore, our strategy to tackle uh, Alzheimer's disease is to use artificial catalytic oxygenation of A-beta to generate non-toxic uh, oxygenated A-beta. Uh, as an initial catalyst, uh, we use a 
flavin conjugated peptide. This is a ligand to attach the catalyst to A beta. And the, by using this photocatalyst, we could cleanly convert amyloid beta to the oxygenated amyloid beta, uh, even in the presence of the cells. And luckily, we found that this oxygenated A beta is no more pathogenic, and there is no ability to aggregate to the neurotoxic form. And therefore, this artificial process can be viewed as a artificial cl clearance of aberrant pr proteins in the cells. A bonus of this approach is uh, that uh, this oxygenated A beta worked as an aggregation inhibitor of native A beta. That means only a very small amount of oxy oxygenation might uh, prevent native A beta uh, to aggregate that toxic form. There are, this is a, only an initial step, and uh, there are many, many problems. For example, uh, we don't know how to shine light in our brain, and also organ catalyst might be a better solution compared to metal catalyst for the reaction in the brain, but uh, still, uh, there is a, a transfer problem through the blood-brain barrier, and also uh, there is a problem uh, about the toxicity. But those are next step challenge. And I'll explain uh, briefly about our actual experimental result. And this is the reaction we are optimizing. Our substrate is of uh, 42 amino acid residues containing proteins. And the product is oxygenated A beta, which is not toxic anymore. And by optimizing this chemical reaction, we found that uh, riboflavin, which is a vitamin B2, uh, in, the, in the presence of 20 more percent of uh, this photocatalyst, uh, under air, visible light uh, shining, and water solvent at 37 degree, uh, A beta is oxygenated uh, relatively cleanly. And we utilize Nobel Prize technique instead of TLC to check the reactions. And after one, rea uh, one hour, plus 16, plus 16, oxygenated peaks are obtained. And after three hours, uh, the starting material almost disappeared. And uh, from amino acid analysis, uh, we found that uh, these three residues are uh, target for oxygenation. And from the AFA image, uh, native amyloid beta aggregates after six hours. However, after oxygenation, we didn't see any aggregates. That means oxygenated A beta is no more aggregated. And uh, uh, cell viability was rescued from 20% without any treatment. Amyloid beta kills 80% of cells. But in the presence of our catalyst with light, uh, uh, 60% cells are still alive. That means uh, our reaction can be conducted even in the presence of the cells. And this is a bonus slide. Uh, native uh, A beta aggregates after six hours, but in the presence of oxygenated A beta, this aggregation was prevented. <clears throat> so this is a kind of summary of uh, this initial step. We invented an artificial organ catalyst that do the photo-oxygenation in, in the presence of neuron cells, and the oxygenated A beta is not no more aggregated. And we believe that we can uh, expand uh, this concept to uh, other proteins uh, other than A beta. And uh, our strategy may be related to photodynamic therapy which kills cancer cells by using uh, photo, uh, uh, singlet oxygen, oxygen uh, by uh, photo irradiation. But the PDT is a very brutal methodology, and uh, they kill the cells, and the target is any, any of the critical chemical uh, uh, compounds in the cells. But uh, our catalyst, is more molecular technology work, and uh, uh, our catalyst uh, target is a single molecule, hopefully, eventually. 
And uh, in that sense, uh, Cali Fali method, which was pr proposed by Professor Jay in late 80s, is maybe related. And they conjugated uh, photocatalyst to uh, antibodies, and uh, 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 they oxygenated specific protein on the, on the cell surface. But uh, this is a, a chemical biology technology. We, went, we want to go further. And this process, we want to make this process to the surrogate of ubiquitin proteasome systems. With that, uh, I really thank the, uh, my group members that share this exciting challenge, and also uh, Erato uh, for uh, giving me a chance to tackle uh, this uh, very exciting uh, field. Thank you very much. Thank you.